I never know what video is going to do good when I put a video up on YouTube. I spent five months preparing like a four hour video on like doing ML agents driving and uh, it only got like, it started off really good, but then the hits went down. And then I did this other one the other day with a na nav mesh creating a crowd simulator and, and that one has like a whole bunch of hits. But uh, when I made that video, I did realize that I was like, there was something to solve. And that was like when you have a nav mesh, see here, the blue is the nav mesh. How do I pick random points on a nav mesh to travel to? So in this tutorial here, I'm going to go over how I figured a way to do that. So you can see here, as the thing's playing, he it shows the path that's being planned out. And if the path can be reached, then the green bar stays right there. That's where the destination is, the random point. But sometimes the random points, they are off the nav mesh and you're not going, the, then it just, the path recalculates, I mean, then it just gets another random point. So you see, sometimes it, it was there on the cardboard box and then it moved because the cardboard box, it couldn't get there so that it does. So you may say like, okay, so why do I even let it go on the cardboard box? Well, on this, game screen the the nav mesh path is calculated really quickly but depending on the complexity sometimes the nav mesh path may not be ready by the next command so i did a thing where it tries to figure out it gets a random point if the random point is on one of the cardboard boxes um then i use an invoke to see is that point reachable anyway so we're gonna we're gonna do this tutorial here to, to do this kind of thing. See, so every point that he winds up going to is a point on the nav mesh, and let's see how to do that now. All right, so let me stop this, and I'll start up a new Unity project. So I closed out that, and let's just open up a new one, um, a new project. Let's call it random points nav mesh create. So here I have a brand new 3D Unity project, and um, let's get it ready to do some nav mesh stuff. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put in uh, a cube, and this cube will be our floor, and I'll just give it a size, like 20 by 20, and I'll move it down by, by one unit, and then I'll give it a... Um, let me see, I had a texture, so I'm just going to drag and drop a picture of concrete that I had. And what's this hourglass doing here? And I'll drag and drop that onto the cube to give it like the concrete texture. Uh, so it made this material folder here for the concrete. I'm just going to tile it up a little bit more, like three by three or five by five. Five by five. Okay, it's kind of a seamless texture. And let's name that the floor. And save it. And let me just do some organization. I'll just call this my scenario for all my stuff in here. So I'll put the floor in there. Then I'm going to have some objects that are going to be the things that we could move around. Da -da 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 -da. So I will add in a 3D object, another cube, and Maybe make these like five, like just five by five, something that I'm gonna have to move around to get by. And I'm also gonna drag another material in for that. Oops, let me just change my current folder here to assets again. And drag and drop my cardboard texture. And then drag and drag that, drop that on there to have like the cardboard box like we saw. And I'll just put one here and I'll call this obstacle or I'll call it cardboard. Doesn't really matter. And duplicate to get another one. Like in the corner there, and Control D to duplicate a third one. And they could be different sizes. So maybe this one could be longer. All right, so I got some things that you have to get around. All right. <laughs> and um, now if I take these objects here the floor especially, and I make the floor static, then when I go ahead to do the, to bake a nav mesh on this scene, the floor should get, since it's the static object, and specifically it's 
if you double if you click on this little arrow here it's specifically navigation static then when I go to bake a nav mesh I go to window AI navigation and then I get the nav mesh uh, panel I click on the bake button and then I can click bake and then you see all the stuff in blue is a nav mesh and the blue nav mesh it's not even considering the cardboard boxes if I did make one of the cardboard boxes static as well and then baked again you can see that the nav mesh considers a cardboard box on top of the box and on the concrete floor these are static surfaces that the nav mesh says it can navigate to but I don't want to be able to go on top of the cardboard box I want all my random positions to be on the floor but I still want the nav mesh to to see the nav mesh box so let me take the nav this cardboard box here that I made static and uncheck the static and then I'm going to add to the cardboard boxes to all three of them. So let me just hold control and click or do I hold shift? Shift to select all three cardboard boxes. And now here in the inspector window, I'm going to add component navigation nav mesh obstacle. Okay, so here's the nav mesh obstacle. And now if I try to click um, bake, it bakes, but it's, uh, let me see something with the nav mesh is it nope it's still not considering the cardboard box control Z so I'll select all the cardboard boxes again with the nav mesh obstacle there's this checkbox here for carve to carve out of the nav mesh the space for the boxes so I, I'll check that and then these are some settings for the carving now if I do the nav mesh bake bam oh look it already did it it has it outlined, but I can't go on the box. So this is what I want now. So all this blue area is where I'm going to be able to move around whatever my character is. So now let me get a character that I'm going to do the moving around. Um, so let me just set up myself here. I'm just going to create a folder. I'll call it resources. And in the resources folder, I'll take that Magic of Voxel model that I had. It's the Omar Vision OBJ file, the PNG file, and the material file and I'll stick them in here. So this is what happens when I export an OBJ for a Magic of Voxel. It kind of makes the model. Then there's the um, image that has the colors and then a material file. Okay, so that's what happens when I export from Magic of Voxel and, and I drag it, drop it into Unity. Um, what I'm going to do now, uh, I just started learning, I just want to do this here. So this character here if I click on it and go back to the inspector window um, by default each one of these things that I drag in from magical voxel they would all have their own material and e if each of them had their own material and I had like hundreds of magical voxel objects then it would take time for each of them to load their own material into memory to you know texture the object but if I create a unity material and then apply that unity material to the magical voxel object and there was hundreds of them it's just one material that loads into memory so it's faster so what i'm going to do with this magic voxel magic voxel model is i'm going to make a material out of this omar vision thing right here um so kind of like an easy way for me to make material is i kind of just let me just put an object here okay and then i'm just going to drag and drop it on the object and then it makes a material right there and the material got named omar vision i'll just call it um MV, whoops, gotta do the rename, click on it. MV palette. Okay. And I don't need the sphere, I just did that to make the material. So now here in my assets folder, I click on the Omar Vision asset. I'm on the materials button and I kind of pick that MV palette material and I say apply. And everything pretty much looks the same. The only thing is, like, if I go to the material now, well, let me drag and drop this model here. Ooh, you see how big he is? Yeah. That's because everything in Magic of Voxel seems to have a, it just everything's in a different scale. Um, so that's fine. What I'll do is, also, the Magic of Voxel stuff, there's a parent empty game object, and then inside there's the mesh thing. So I want to separate that. So I'm going to click on the parent and unpack the pre prefab, and then drag and drop the inner one out. And then I could delete the empty game object part. Delete. Because I really just want this guy, the one with the mesh. Um, and then to size him down, let's trans let's choose a scale 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03. And let's double click. And that's about the size I want him. Okay. 
Also, let me add a mesh collider, physics mesh collider, and I'll make it convex so it's like wrapped around him. And then I will add a physics rigid body so that I could detect collisions with him. And since he has these tiny little feet and a big head, if he hits stuff, he may kind of fall over. So I'm going to constrain the rotations so that he stays standing up straight. And now I kind of have him ready to use like a prefab. Well, I'm going to make him a prefab, but I'm not finished with him yet. To make him move around, I um, also want to add, if he's going to move around on the nav mesh that we made, see this nav mesh? Is it going to show itself because I'm on the nav mesh tab? Bake. Okay. Yeah, so if he's going to move around on this nav mesh, then go back to the inspector window here and click him. He's going to have to be a nav mesh agent. So I'll go to navigation and add nav mesh agent. Bam. And then when I did that, it's kind of hard to see, I guess, but there is a cylinder shape that wrapped around him that is representing him as a nav mesh agent. And the base offset is how far from the floor the nav mesh agent is. I think you could see the green cylinder collider going up and down, but I want him to be right on the floor. So I'll say zero for the offset. So he's right on, on the nav mesh. And then you see now that this nav mesh agent collider is too high. So here is the height. I could bring it down to his, the height of my character. And then there's also the radius for how fat this nav mesh thing. And it was pretty, it was pretty good that it locked in on him. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll leave it the size of his head. <laughs> okay. So now I got this nav mesh agent and the nav mesh agent collider fitting around him. What else do we need? Oh, we're gonna need a script to move have this character move around on the nav mesh. So let's make our first script, create C sharp script, and I'll call it NMA script for a nav mesh agent script. And let's double click it and let's look at it to start writing it. So first I'll gut this out and I'll start thinking what kind of things do I need? Well, I'll need a, in the script, I'll need a reference to um, the nav mesh agent component over here. So private nav mesh agent. And you're noticing that there's a red squiggly. Um, Unity does, I mean, C sharp doesn't know what that is yet. NMA equals null. Okay. And I could find there's an easy way that I could try to alleviate this red squiggly. I could just put my mouse over it. And then Visual Studio has this show potential fixes. I could click that. And I could see the using statement that I need to add for nav mesh agent right here. And I could click it and then it adds the using statement and then nav mesh agent goes green. That means now the script knows what that is. Yay. Save that. I need to know, yeah, the component, the nav mesh agent component for my guy. I'm also going to need to know um, what the floor is, you know, so that I could like move around on the floor. So in here I can make another private variable game object floor. Or more specifically about the floors, I want to know what the bounds are of the floor. So when I pick random points, they're random points on the floor. So this could be bounds for BND, the bounds that I can move in. Okay, floor. And we'll leave that like that. So now in the start function, private void start, we could um, get the nav mesh agent and the bound floor. So NMA is going to equal this, the thing the script's attached to. Get component uh, nav mesh agent. It's going to try to get the nav mesh agent component off of the game object that this is attached to. And hopefully that will be there. And then we want to get the floor. So we're going to use um, down floor. First we have to get the object. So I'm going to use the capital G-A-M-E object, that's game objects of the scene, dot, find, and I think I named it floor, and this has to be case sensitive, dot, get component, renderer, er, 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 bam, oops, dot, bounds, there we go, so we get the bounds object of the floor, so first this part finds the floor, hopefully that's not null, and then this part gets the renderer of the floor, and then from the renderer of the floor we get the bounds object finally. And let's just make sure that it, I named it floor in the scene. And here it is, floor, lowercase. All right. Um, then we're going to probably, when, after it starts up, 
then we'll probably want to pick some kind of destination for the uh, our character to move to. So let me make a function for that. Um, private void, oops. Private void set random destination. Okay. And then from the start, I guess I'll call set random destination. <laughs> so here I could just say set random destination. And now in here, the first thing I have to do is one is like pick a point. And here's where the tutorial is going to come in. We're going to try to pick a point that's going to be on the blue area, that's on the nav mesh area. So when, I hate this, it's this thing with it, let's read the script, but yeah, the navigation thing again, this blue mesh area, that's the nav mesh. We want to make sure, but we only have the floor object. So as random points are going to be picked, if the point is not on the blue mesh area, we're going to figure out a way to determine that and then pick another random point. So first off, we just pick a random point. So I will say float, or maybe just for that, I'll say int. No, 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 no. Float rx, because that's what the vector takes floats. Equals random dot range. I want a random value on the x-axis that goes from the bound floor dot min dot x to the bound floor dot max dot x. Okay, and range it goes from the first value is inclusive. That means that that value could actually come up randomly to the second value is max exclusive, which means it won't actually get a value in max.x, but these are floats, so it's close enough. Float rz, the z-axis, random.range, because axes x and z, they're on the floor, not going up in the sky. Dot min dot z, comma, bound floor dot max dot z. So this is first, it's just gonna, I'm just gonna get two random points on the floor, not considering the nav mesh yet. Then I will have uh, the NMA dot set destination to set, to get my character trying to go to this random point. And set destination, it's gonna take a vector three. So let me just make another variable here. Vector three, move to. And uh, let's say move to equals a new vector three rx comma this dot transform dot position dot y and rz. Okay. And here in set destination, we will try to move to that. Bam. So when this command happens, this starts the this um, starts um, the game object moving. Um, but before it starts the game object moving, it's going to um, figure out path, and then the game object starts moving. So I just want to mention it's two steps. It figures out the path, and then the game object will start moving to that random destination. So with this code that I wrote already, we should see something happen. So let's go and try that before we make any more code. We go to inspector window. Um, let's drag and drop the script onto the Omar Vision character. Okay, let's get a little closer so we can see things here. So we can see most of the floor. Okay. And let me set my camera to this view. I select the camera and press Control Shift F. Now you see how the camera's the view. Do, 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 do. And there are my scripts on here. And now I cross my fingers because I'm going to press play for the first time and hopefully I don't have any errors that's, that are going to come up. Press play. And it's going to move to a random point. So I press play and Okay, he kind of moved. I don't know where the random point is. So let's do something so we could see where the random point is as well. So let me add a game object that will just kind of like point out where the random point is to us. I'll add a cylinder and then I'll make it really, really skinny. So it looks like a stick, kind of like a flag post to mark out where this point is. And I'll make it a little bit taller and raise it up to stick out of the ground a little. And it's white, so that's not very visible. So let me just give it a color here by creating a material. Call it for the pole. And let's, what do you think? Give it a green color, like the go to point, go here. And try to drag and drop it on there. There you go, now it's green. And we'll call it pole. <laughs> okay. So now we could use this pole to tell where the destination is. So let's go back to the Omar Vision NMA script 
and we will have another variable now, private, whoops, private game object pull. And just like we found the floor, we could find the pull. So pull game object is going to equal game object. There's only one pull object that's going to be in our scene, so I could just use this method, find pull. Okay, and let me put my mouse over the word find. We could see that the find returns a game object. So this is going to work. So now that we have the pull. So once we do the set random destination with the move to and all that, and then we call set the destination to move to, we could see where that random place is that we're moving to by just saying, by putting the pull dot transform dot position equal to new vector, blah, 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 blah. Vector three, it's the move to dot x, comma this dot trans, transform dot position dot y, comma move to dot z. Yeah, so the reason I'm um, leaving the objects with their y positions is because I'm just moving across the floor and whatever height in the y axis above the floor, just leave it the same. I'm just trying to move the rx and the rz. So that's how come I keep using, oops, it's not this, it's pull, sorry pull.transform, and here it's this. That would have been a boo-boo. I just want the height to stay the same for these objects. I just want to move their x and their z. All right, so this will show us um, to show the destination to us so we can see what it is. And let's see how that works. Come back here, press play. And OK, there's a random point right there. And you can see he's moving to it, and I think he gets to it. If I look on the navigation view, it doesn't show it yet. All right, he gets to it, I think, right? But let me just look at the navigation thing again. Yeah, because you see along the sides there's a space that is not, I guess, I have it that it's not really reachable. So the character would have moved here that are nav mesh, and I think the pull's here. But it's okay. We're going to make sure wherever the pole goes, matter of fact, I'm changing the view to a, a much more top-down view so we could see those outlines. Main camera, control shift F. Um, another nice thing to do, and this is, this is also a nice tutorial point here, is we could draw a line that shows the path that we're moving, like to show what is the path. Like we, we, show, we could show what the, the navigation, the NavMesh AI figured out for us. We could draw a line that says where it's planning for us to go. All right, so let's also do that feature. So here, third is like we'll draw a line on the floor. Um, to draw the line on the floor, I need another private variable, a line renderer. And I'll just call that line. First, it'll equal null. And then in the start function, we could initialize the line renderer. So line could equal this dot, uh, that's not an equal, equal this dot, game object dot and we're going to add a component through the script over here add component line renderer um bam we add a line renderer then we give it a material line dot material could equal a new material um use a shader dot find um, sprites, default material. It's one of the materials that are in the project that get created when we make the project. And then we can say how fat we want the line to be with multiplier. Let's make it this fat, 0.2. Okay. All right, so here we um, kind of instantiated a line object. Right, and then over here we're going to use it. We're going to use it to draw the line. So how do we know what the path is that the nav mesh agent thought up? How do we know what it is? Well, watch me right now. So what I'm going to do to draw the path, um, the path is something that the NMA has in it. So if the NMA dot path dot corners dot length is greater than greater than or equal to two, because you need at least two points to draw a line. Then we could draw a line. So we'll say line dot position count how many positions are on this line will equal the NMA dot path dot corners dot length. Okay, so that sets the size of the array. 
Then for i, e oops, for int i equals zero, i less than nma dot path dot corners dot length i plus plus. That's to go through all the points on the path. So for each point, we're going to add line dot set position. It's position i, and we'll say that the position is nma dot path dot corners at i. Ta da! So the drawing the line, it should like, when it, I set all the positions of the line, the line should look like that. That's what it should look like. Okay, so when we sit around and we pick a point, we have the nav mesh agent figure out how to get there. We show the destination of the current point and we draw a line to the current point. And now we're going to have to check to see if that point is on the nav mesh agent. So here's the second part of the tutorial. So I could say this is um, number one tutorial. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Tutorial. And now um, the next function here, this is going to be, well, is it a function? Do I have to be a function? It's going to be a number two tutorial. After it picks the point, it sets a destination. Oh, man, hopefully it, got, it has the path all figured out. This can definitely show where we're going. Um, we're going to give the nav mesh agent time to actually figure out the path in case you made a more complex thing. So we'll use an invoke and we'll call our we'll call our function check path check point on path. That'll be the name of the function and we'll call it in 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, so then over here, we're giving it at least 0 0.2 seconds, which in the computer world is a long time because computers think in nanoseconds. <laughs> All right, so private void check point on path is going to check to see if the point that we picked is on a path. So how do we do that? Let's think. We got, the, we got all the points in the path. I think this here, we're going to have to bring it down because we can't be drawing out the path until we gave it a chance to figure itself out. So I'm going to bring that down into, into this function. For here's where we do the check, OK? So the way we're going to do the check is we're going to say if nma.path end position Hey, convenient. They have the end position right there. If it doesn't equal the move to, that means the path couldn't exactly get to where the move to was, then we know that this point is not on the nav mesh. Yay! You know, point is not on nav mesh. Ta-da! So if it's not on the nav mesh, um, what we'll do is we'll just tell it to pick another point. Okay, so we'll just say set random destination again to pick another point. That way all the, the points that it picks is going to be something that's on the nav mesh. So let's go ahead and see this work. So I come over here. Did I press save? Yeah. All right, so I come over here and now I press play. And oh, see, it took one, two, three until it found the point on the nav mesh. And I'm not actually able to get to that point because my pole has a collider on it. Let me take the collider off the pole. All it has to be is visual for us. So let me remove the collider. And then I'll press play. And the character should actually be able to get to the pole. Da -da 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 -da. Boop. And he gets right to the pole. Cool. Now, while he's moving along, and let's see if there's any var other variables that the nav mesh agent has that it could show us while things are happening. So I'm going to collapse this to definitions. OK. Um, and over here in the scene, I'm going to add some um, UI text so we could see some values. So here, I'll right click and say Game Object UI Text Mesh Pro. And this is something that wasn't originally with Unity. So when I go to use it, I'm going to have to import the Text Mesh Pro Essentials. So go ahead and do that. And I can close that window. So here now with the uh, TMP thing, this text TMP, um, I'm not seeing anything here, but you see this white outline, that's the canvas thing. When I go to the game view, this is the uh, game view here, all right? Um, so here's the canvas, here's the TextMesh Pro thing, and this event system thing got added. I'm just going to drag and drop that in canvas. I want to do that. So here's my um, text object. My, so I'm going to call this my um, UI text. Oops, why, I got to click on it to rename it here. UI text. And let me just set its position on the screen and the size of the font and everything. So I'm going to put the size down to the 26. And here I could hold the Alt key and then click on this. I'm still holding the Alt key. 
then I could click on this to have the text come up here, or this to have the text come down here. I'm going to have the text come on down here. And the width of this, it says 200. I'm just going to make it that the text could be longer. So I'll say 800. And you're like, oh, it went away. Um, it's just I may have to do this again. Alt, click. OK, there you go. And the color of the text is white. That should be visible, except if it's on this part. So Text Mesh Pro is cool because you could do some things that you couldn't do with the original Unity text thing. And the thing that you can do uh, here is you can give it an outline. And you can give it a thickness. So you see how it's outlining in black and how thick it outlines in black? So it kind of helps the text stand out. Um, and now the text itself is kind of skinny. So can I do something about that? Oh, yeah, I could dilate it, make it fatter. See, with the dilate. So I'm going to dilate it up so it's visible and give it a fat outline so we can see it from far away, whatever text we put there. All right, so that's set up. All right, so we're going to want our own revision guide to be giving output to the text so we could see it. So guess what? We need another private. Ooh, it's a text mesh pro object text equals null. And just like when we did the nav mesh agent, right now it doesn't know what that is. So I put my mouse over it, click on show potential fixes, and I could add the using TM Pro. And now it knows what that is. Now I got my text object. Um, and then here in the start, we will say that the text equals game object dot find UI text. Now that gets the game object, but this is not a game object. This is the text mesh pro. So we have to go further. Dot get component text mesh pro object. Bam. There we go. Okay. Now we have a text mesh pro object. Now we could like display values in it. So let's add an update function. Private void update. Bing bing. And here we will make a um Let's make a, a string s1 equals string dot format. Uh, uh, what are the values that we're going to want to show? We want NMA dot. Um, what kind of values do we have in here that maybe we want to look at? What do we want to look at? NMA dot has path. That means it figured out its path. So that'll be nice to see. So path, I'll just make it lowercase path equals, and we can see the value of that. Then another thing we want to see probably is rah, 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 rah. Well, what else would, would we want to see? Um, uh, I guess we want to see the result of checking the path, that if we actually got a point on the path. So that is this thing. So right here the point is not on the path or not on the nav mesh, right? Oop, not cut, darn it, control V. I want to copy, and I want to put that here. So when I put this here with the parentheses, this kind of converts into a boolean. So I want to see if the end position and the move to are equal, and that would mean that um, um, on um, point on nav mesh, point on nav mesh equals one. So I got, we have a path and at the points on the nav mesh, boom. And I'm missing my little semicolon. So we create this string and then on the text, dot text will equal S1. Bam, bam, bam. So we don't even really need S1. We could just do this here. So I'll do that. Paste. And text dot text, I kind of it's kind of crazy, that name, right? So maybe I'll call this variable something else. So I, I could rename a variable in C Sharp. I could just select it, right click on it, and say rename. And let's call it um, TMP for Text Mesh Pro. But I guess I'll put the word Pro, TM Pro, Text Mesh Pro. And then click the Apply. And you see how everywhere it changed to Text Mesh Pro? So that changes everywhere in the code where that variable is used, and it updates them all. So instead of calling it text, I call it text mesh pro. And I did that because text mesh pro dot text value seems better than text dot text to me. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff here. Let's try it out and see what happens. It's gonna find the place, it's gonna show if it's on point. And we look down here. And 
then nothing happened. It stopped. And it's very hard to see. My colors are bad, but there's an error message. So let me just stop the game and double click on the error message. It takes me here. What is it saying is wrong? Let me look over here. It says object reference not set to instance of an object. Ooh, not set to instance of an object. What here could be null? Maybe Text Mesh Pro is null. Maybe up here it never found this object, and then I started trying to use it. So let's just see. I called it UI text, and here I called it UI text. Um, well, all right, let's just put a breakpoint here. We're going to debug and see like why that error is coming. I press Attach to Unity. Okay, now this is running, and it's ready and waiting. Now I go to Unity, and I press Play, and it should hit the breakpoint. Okay, so it comes and it comes to the breakpoint. Okay, so right now it's null. Let's see if this has a value. So I select it and I kind of right click and say um, quick watch. And okay, that has a value. See, it's not null. And then how about this whole thing here? Right click and quick watch. That's null. So there is no Text Mesh Pro object on the UI text. I may have made a mistake. It's not a text mesh pro. Maybe it's a text mesh pro UI. Uh, no, there's no such thing. Text mesh pro UI GUI. There you go. Okay, that's the object I want. So over here, let's change it to that too. Paste. I picked the wrong object. It's a text mesh pro UI GUI that's on the um, UI text mesh. Let's see if that gets rid of the null. By just running it this time. So come on. And oh, let me stop the previous and run it again. Okay, now it's working better. See? Path true, point on nav mesh true. Path equals false. Oh, so that's a thing. When we finish traveling on the path and get to our destination, the path equals false. We could use that. All right. So let's have it keep finding more and more and more paths, okay? So here in the update, we kind of um, travel to our path, right? Now that we travel to our path, let's do a thing. If NMA dot has path equals false, then we'll call set random destination. Now, when we call set random destination, it is this loop for update. It could happen many, many, many times. It's happening as fast as the screen redraws itself. So. NMA has path may equal false until there is a path figured out. So we don't want to call it a bunch of times. We just want to call it one time. So I'm just going to make a flag variable over here. Private void flag. Oh, not void. Private bool flag. And at first it's it's false. The flag is off. And um, so only when it doesn't have a path and the flag is false equal to false with two equals false, then I could call set random destination. If I come in here and I'm going to call set random destination, then the flag equals true. And the only thing that can set it to false again is is after set destination is called. Okay, so flag equals false again. So I could call it again. That way it makes it that I could only call this one time at a time until it gets set again. I hope that works. Let's see. Let's stop the game. I didn't even stop it when I went to do the editing. Save. OK. Um, so now what I'm doing is it's going to find the path. And then once it gets there, then it's going to find a path again. All right, here we go. Play. Do, 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 do. And boom, there's a path I can get to. There's a path I can get to. There's a path there. See, sometimes when it, it jiggles around like that, it's because the path is not on the nav mesh, and it keeps going until it finds one on the nav mesh. So now we have a character that is moving around on the screen from point on the nav mesh to point on the nav mesh to point on the nav mesh. And we also learned how to kind of display a line that shows the nav mesh um, calculated path. And that's the end of this tutorial. Ta-da!